The following program is brought to you by Christ Apostolic Church, Wilson. God be the glory and welcome to the way of God. I am Pastor Abraham Obadare and with me here today uh, one more time is Pastor Samuel Obadare. Yo, that name sounds familiar. It sounds like, hmm, is, are you brothers? Yes, we are. <laughs> we thank the Lord God Almighty for such opportunity. I want to welcome you thank to you, today's sir. program. Thank you. Yes, pleasure. Pastor, thank you so much for uh, the uh, word you shared with us the last time um, and, and, and the, the title of that uh, is what we're repeating today actually but we, I mean we're continuing is uh, uh, the, 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 the religion that is uh, uh, useless it's mm. called useless religion and, and you and I may ask Use, useless religion how what how can how come somebody is going to call my religion useless, mm -hmm. right? Well, take no offense. Let's just go ahead and uh, go into the Word of God and we'll see why uh, the, 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 the Word of God is referring to uh, relig certain religion, certain religious activities mm -hmm. as uh, useless. And the, the, the you, you, Pastor, you said the measure of the of the, the state of my heart mm -hmm. is my tongue. That's right. Yeah, that my, my tongue actually uh, uh, gives off the, the, the temperature yes, sir. <laughs> of my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and God is looking at the heart. Yes. He's judging by the heart. Right. right? And from the abundance of all, what is in my heart, my mouth is speaking that's right therefore uh james 1 26 is saying that if 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 i uh, uh cannot bridle uh, uh some call it bridle if i cannot control my tongue mm. then my, my 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 religion is useless pastor I, I heard you say something, uh, it, it was an analogy you were giving mm -hmm. um, as to how, how God uses the tongue to, to gauge our heart. You mm -hmm. said you had a car, mm -hmm. you had a vehicle <clears throat> that had uh, a, a, a gas gauge mm -hmm. that uh, just, uh, please t t take me sure, back into sure. that, I think it's interesting yeah. in a way of understanding this. Yeah, the, the analogy, again, uh, we bless God for the opportunity to be here and Absolutely. share this word of God with you. God, you know, always in the scriptures uses analogy for us to understand the spiritual things. Yes. And the man, um, the, the human author of this book, we're studying the book of James, he used a lot of analogy mm -hmm. so that we can understand about the tongue and about the proper religion. So I used an analogy the other time to understand that James chapter 1 verse 26 when it says a person's religion is useless, is worthless, it has no value um, when it comes to measuring where they are. But it is the tongue that really can tell them. And the analogy is this, you know, don't, don't laugh at this. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had a car that was worse, but anyway. I once had a car that the gas needle was malfunctioning. Mm -hmm. And so it could read half of a tank but really, maybe you have just one-eighth of a tank left in there. Mm. And so, <clears throat> as the owner, I came to uh, understand how to know exactly how much gas I had because that gas needle, at that point, because of the malfunction, had become worthless mm. in indicating the amount of gas that I have in the tank. And so if I were to loan the car to you and you are driving it and you are just going by what the gas needle says, you are being deceived. Mm -hmm. Because that thing is not, doesn't mean anything. You can have something totally different and you're about to get stuck on the road. Yeah. That's what James is saying, that our physical performances, 
our religious activities they are useless they are worthless they are of no value in measuring the amount of transformation that has happened in us or in measuring our spiritual maturity mm. as good and excellent as those activities may be in fact they may become uh, deceiving to people but worse they may become deceiving to us I may, I may think because of those activities in church that i do that uh, god actually reckons with me that's that right I'm, i mean in god's good book i'm growing yeah. I'm, I'm you know i've been trying you know god sees all the good things i'm doing mm. but james says no your tongue will reflect where your heart is mm. and that's why the tongue is very important if let's think about this when you go to the doctor mm -hmm. even as sophisticated as you know the mm -hmm. world is now mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. machines that can scan everything on the inside of you without you lifting a finger yeah but the doctor will still say open your mouth mm -hmm. and they'll put that little spatula or something and, and press down your tongue why mm -hmm. because watch this physically even your tongue tells a lot about your health mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. You know, so the, the color of it, the, 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 the odor of it, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's dry mm -hmm. or, or whatever, all of that mm -hmm. tells us, without putting any instrument inside of you, your health. Ah, mm -hmm. God says too, that what comes out of my tongue, mm -hmm. watch this, not when everybody's looking, you see now I'm speaking well because right. I'm in front of the camera, right. that's not what God is saying, right. but what right. comes out of my tongue when I'm in my car? Mm -hmm. When somebody just, you know, brushes me or is about to, you know, right. uh-huh. When somebody says something that offends me and, you know, the pastor is not around. Mm -hmm. When I'm only with my wife, when I'm only with, you know, my children or with a co-worker and the boss is not there. What comes out of my tongue at mm -hmm. that time is a measure. Is a measure of what's in my of heart. The, of what is in my heart. Wow. Forget the religious shows. Did you hear that? I pray you gain understanding. That I gain understanding, I pray that the understanding we gain brings about freedom from the bondage that uh, we are in, mm. not knowing that uh, we're not moving forward as far as God is concerned yes. because of the words that come from our mouth. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Something else you said uh, uh, in terms of uh, some of the some of the uh, things that can be uh, called uh, evil speaking, mm -hmm. right? Um, the verse, verse. Um, we, we can look at. Let, let me see. Verse eight is good, mm -hmm. right? No man can tame this tongue. We've yes. already said that verse six. The verse six said it, not us. Mm -hmm. Verse six says that's James chapter three, verse six that the tongue is a fire. Yes, we have we know that right. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a world of iniquity. Yes, right. Um, it, it it defiles. It has the power mm -hmm. to defile the entire body. That's right. And set on fire the course of nature. Mm -hmm. Now. Now, before we go to verse 8, that scares me. Yes, sir. The tongue has the power, the potential to set on fire mm. the course, the channel of nature. Mm -hmm. And it is set on fire by hell. Mm. What in the world? Yeah. <clears throat> it's uh, it's a little scary <clears throat> you see that that uh, in terms of the language when the bible says the, the 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 tongue is able to set the course of life on fire it literally says this the tongue is able to set the circuit or the wheel of existence mm -hmm. on fire um that's the the literal word and, and think of this, if you have a wheel mm -hmm. and the hub, the center catches fire. Yeah. 
You know, you know everything else is going to burn because the fire will go through the spokes mm -hmm. or through the rim or whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And so all you need to set on fire is the hub, the mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. Everything else is gone. Mm -hmm. That's what the scripture is saying. So that the entire course of one's life mm -hmm. can be consumed by what one says. Mm. I doubt if there is any other potent enemy like that. The devil can hit me on, on, on the back or on the forehead, on, you know, on one part of me. Mm -hmm. But he's not able to actually by one action, but the tongue can do that. Can do that. And when we start to look at the lives of some people in the scripture, we realize that just one moment in time they said one thing. And that sealed their fate. That's what the Bible is saying. I remember, I remember that guy, um, <laughs> the guy in First Samuel, the, 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 the last chapter, mm -hmm. and... <laughs> the, 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 yeah, I know. The, the first chapter of the second Samuel, uh -huh. the guy said, oh, 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 King, uh, I, I know, took care uh, of <laughs> I saw Saul and things and I, I helped him kill him. Yes. Whoa. But, but David knew that you're not supposed to touch the anointed of God. So yes. if with his tongue, he told King David that he was the one who killed Saul. Mm -hmm. So David now said, well, based on what you, you said. said then the blood of the king be upon you and that's so he also was killed just i can like see that. why why someone's tongue someone's own speech mm -hmm. can cause problem that will destroy that person wow and so if we're looking for one of the you know yesterday we were talking about we have to recognize that our tongue is one of the closest enemies that we have. If not, if not the if, closest enemy. If enemies. not the closest enemy. Because it lives right inside of our mouth. Mm. And it's one of the deadliest enemies. You see, here's, here's where it is, oh, you know. have mercy. Um, <clears throat> somebody can hit us, but we don't have to be around them 24-7. Right. We can escape right. their vices. Right. Even the devil, I think sometimes, he looks... The other way, somewhere, somewhere, yeah. he's gonna mess up with somebody. If he yeah. punches me but enough man. and he says, Well, this guy is just not dying, yeah. But the tongue doesn't take a break, he can't cut it up, he can't cut it. That's it's, right, it's there. So, our objective then is that we once now we are recognizing the deadliness of the tongue, mm -hmm. it becomes a chief priority for us mm -hmm. as believers. You listening to us to now say, Well, okay, mm -hmm. so after all. One of the things that, that is killing me could be right in my mouth. And I need to deal with it. And that's what, why we're sharing this with, with you. Because last time we started talking about, you know, what, what we need to do what and things I like do? that. Because uh, if we don't deal with it, one speech can set the whole course of life on fire. May God help you and me. Amen. I don't know what you have been saying. The way you talk when you just feel like it. But the Lord is calling you to begin to examine yourself. Mm. And, and, and identify, I mean come to terms with the fact that the tongue has the nature of bring, has the, the potential yes. to bring destruction upon oneself that's right of course upon others that's right mm. but the lord is willing to touch your tongue even today set it on the holy fire if i may use that word mm. to clean it so that whatever is coming forth from it will become holy awesome mm -hmm. and healing that's right. I pray for you today as you're <clears throat> listening to the word of God, that the power of the Holy Spirit begin to guide the direction, the course of your tongue. Mm. Not to live it in the way it wants to live, in the way it wants to go. That's right. This is a serious matter, Pastor. Yes, sir, it is. I, I, I must confess that I, didn't, I never thought it had this magnitude until I studied this passage, mm -hmm. you know, for the, uh, the, 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 the presentation of the Word of God. Yeah. And 
you know, as we go on here, just so we mention the other vices on mm -hmm. the tongue. Mm -hmm. And our, our, our goal is to let you know through the word of God what you and I need to do. However, to do that, we need you to identify the problems. Mm -hmm. We talked about evil speaking evil last speaking, time. That's one. The B one, part. One, one. Of the death bringing poisons. Okay. On the tongue. Okay. Evil speaking. Evil speaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that includes criticism mm -hmm. of, all, of others. Mm -hmm. And the B part of evil speaking, which we often fall into, is evil speaking of authority. Mm -hmm. Naturally, human beings, we don't like anybody Any telling language. us what to do. We may love them as a human being, but when it comes to them being our superior, it's, it's we criticize. How many times have you criticized your boss at work? Your husband? You know, your, whoever is in front of you? Even the policeman? Forgetting that they are human beings. Right. We have to watch out for criticism, for judging, for condemnation of authorities. On that quickly, Miriam and Aaron fell into that problem of criticism. And it literally, we're talking about the tongue can destroy life. And you're saying, well, I don't get it. It literally ended the life of Miriam, Miriam. as we know it. She spoke against Moses. And some of you are falling into this sin of speaking against a man of God mm. or somebody in authority. It doesn't even have to be a man of God. It may be your boss that is younger than you. Mm. And the Bible says in, in Numbers 12 that God heard it. Human beings spoke against Moses, and what they said was right, was mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. But it was not their place to say, to say it. God heard it. God was angry, and God judged both of them. Remember, Miriam was a prophetess, and Aaron was a priest, but it didn't matter before God. Mm -hmm. Their tongue put them into problem, even though, yes, Miriam was healed after Moses prayed for her, but shortly she died. She would not have died. She was meant to go into that promised land with the rest, but her tongue brought death upon her because of criticism of authority. God hates it. Whether you are right about what you're saying is not the issue, but evil speaking of authority is deadly. If you are doing it, you have to stop it. It's one of those things mm. that is on the tongue. You have to stop it. Pray that the Holy Spirit assists you to stop it. Mm -hmm. If you are always criticizing the uh, people in authority. Yes, sir. Another one of those vices is, and we all need to watch out for it. How many of us don't want to criticize somebody? We do. <laughs> we, we get some kind of satisfaction, and it's a sinful thing. But let's move on. Tail bearing, mm. whispering. Oh, did you know that? I just wanted you to know. Mm -hmm. Don't say I told you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be left out of the loop. Mm. We, we couch these things, you know, we make them look good. But you know the Bible calls them tail bearing. There is this urge. Yes. There is this, it's like an urge that mm. you just want to, <clears throat> you just want to say it. Yes. You just want to say it. You just want to say it. <laughs> Ah, but the Bible says, Proverbs 26, verse 20. Yeah. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. And where there is mm. no tail bearer, strives, ceases. Where there is no wood, the fire goes, fire goes out. <laughs> where, where there is no tail bearer, no tail bearing, strive, fighting, will discord, cease. strife, will cease. So you see what the tongue can do mm -hmm. by way of tail bearing. It destroys relationship. And so it is one of those things we must wow. really be careful about. When you decide to say something to somebody that was not there when it happened, mm -hmm. just so they know mm -hmm. you are tail bearing. You know, <laughs> there is a story of a man named Doeg. You may call it dog. I don't know. It's D O E G G in the scriptures. Yes. The Bible says why David was running from Saul. Mm -hmm. He went to the priest and he just said he needed food. He needed something. Give me something. And the priest said, I hope all is well. I said, Don't worry, all is well. The king sent me on an errand. And so he made his own story. Yeah. And the king gave him some bread to eat and gave him Goliath salt. But the Bible says at that time, there happened to be a man 
with the priest. His name is Doeg. He's one of the servants of Saul. He saw and he heard. He saw what happened <laughs> and he said nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, you know, I didn't see you. Yeah. But later on, when Saul was ranting about David, he said, Sir, just, I just wanted to know mm -hmm. that this David you're looking for, I saw him the other night. He came by. He was with the priest. Mm. And guess what? Saul said, go get me all the priests. And because this man, you know, you know, the Spirit of God left him, so he was acting erratically and mm -hmm. doing all kinds of things. He murdered, he killed all the priests. Wow. Just like that. Why? Because one man could not so. hold his tongue. And what, what's interesting is that the Bible says, <clears throat> David, when he heard, he said, I knew it. The day that I saw that man, he would tell. That's mm. a tale bearer. Mm. David said, I knew it. Immediately I saw him, I knew this matter yes. will be known. Mm. But what I wanted to watch there is that mm. because of tail bearing, a whole you know, rack of people, men of God, killed. were killed. I'm sure Doeg did not know what would, what what would happen by saying what he said. You may not uh, know the result of your action. Mm. You may not have power over the result of your action, mm -hmm. but you do have power, I do have power over my action. Yes. In other words, uh, though I could decide not to say anything, right. he had that control, mm -hmm. but he didn't have control once he spoke it. That's right. What could have happened? Mm. That's right. So, that is very powerful, Pastor, because once we speak out, it sets off a chain reaction that we can no longer control. Mm -hmm. And so the next time you feel the urge to let your, your, a friend in the circle of three friends know about what the other said, mm. you're setting off a rea an action and a chain reaction that, that you not will not control. be able. And it can destroy a home. It can destroy a church. It can destroy anything. That's one of the vices powerful. of the tongue. We have to be careful. I mean... The tongue can almost do what the devil can do. I mean, I know that's a hyperbole, but mm -hmm. it almost seems to be true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, tail bearing is sin and is destructive. As evil speaking. Yes. Evil speaking. And a, 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 a cousin of evil speaking. A cousin of is, evil is, is, is tail, bearing. tail bearing. As maybe if I use that uh, analogy, well, another cousin mm -hmm. of evil speaking is, is what we could say uh, rash and harsh speech. Rash means something that you just say in a hurry without thinking about. And harsh means something that is caustic. Oh, there are some people, my goodness. When they utter a word out of their mouth, it's like a knife that can cut to the heart of somebody and they don't care mm. and they'll tell you i don't care mm. let the chiefs fall wherever they may it's a deadly poison and it cuts people and would you know that we christians do it more than often we do it you say well you know pastor i don't understand it proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 says this there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Mm -hmm. That right there, the Bible is setting up a contrast. Mm -hmm. There is one whose tongue cuts cut and almost destroys mm -hmm. and takes away life. Mm -hmm. But there is another one whose tongue brings healing, puts together. A harsh and rash speech some of us, we speak before we realize what we have said, mm -hmm. but we cannot take it back. And when mm -hmm. we do that, we cut other people. Our tongues are so sharp, and they are so, they are so, the, the Bible says razor sharp, and they are abrasive. You know, there are times that uh, some people say something and it goes to the depth of your soul. In fact, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you that will bring the word of God to counter that, it can mess up your whole day or your whole week. That's also one of the evils of the tongue. Wow. I, I, 
even uh, I'm not sure if we have uh, so much more time mm. uh, on this issue, but I, I'd like us to pause and and just uh, just for uh, take a few seconds to confess uh, uh, this sin mm. of uh, uh, inability to bridle our tongue. Yes, I, I think it's so serious. Mm. Many lives have been destroyed. Uh, life of self, life of others, churches, homes, relationships, mm. uh, people's minds have been disrupted by the things their uh, ears heard you and me say, right? right? So I, I, I think, to be honest, we should say, Lord, have mercy. I'd like to pray with mm. you out there. And just ask that the Lord God Almighty will have mercy, that in, 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 in his mercy he will forgive by the blood that was shed on the cross, mm. that the words that are idle, the words that are evil, the words that uh, 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 come out in, 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 in form of gossip and have destroyed people's lives, the Lord will have mercy. He will forgive you, he will forgive me even today. Yes. As the word of God proceeds into our hearts today, let there be cleansing Amen. of the sin yes. of evil speaking Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let someone yes, begin Lord. to receive grace, yes. to brittle their tongue, to Amen. control Amen. what they say. Yes, now, Lord. oh God, in yes. the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. You do not intend that we destroy ourselves. You do mm. not intend that we continue in this way of life, but that we will come to repentance. Yes. We repent of all evil speaking yes, in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Father, yes. we thank you Hallelujah. for such grace to come back yes. home and say, Daddy, I, I won't speak evil anymore. Mm. And we receive grace not to speak evil anymore. Amen. That the Lord be glorified. Amen. Well, the tongue still got to be used somehow. Mm -hmm. And the way to use it is to begin to bless people. Yes. Begin to build up people. Begin right. to edify That's people. Right. And I pray for such grace, Hallelujah. such ability yes. upon you. Next time you are you, you feel the urge to tell a tale. Mm. Stop it because you do not want to cause a fire. Mm. Next time someone comes to you telling you wanting to gossip, stop it at, at that level, even before you hear it, so that your own spirit does not get uh, contaminated, mm. so that there is no fire caused. So that there is no destruction caused. Bridle your tongue so that your claim to know Jesus mm -hmm. and the works that you do that is called service will not be called, will not be known to God as useless. Pastor, I want to thank God for your life. Amen. This is absolutely powerful. And I do know that these words... Uh, have caused some people to rethink mm. uh, their Christian lines and, and, and uh, to realize uh, how much damage tongue has done and that it could do. Yes. And I just pray uh, that God gives you more wisdom, Amen. more grace. Amen. And um, all those who have been blessed today, go ahead and continue to walk in the statue of the Lord God Almighty. Ask Him for help. No one can do it on their own. Say, oh, yeah, I can control my tongue. No, you can't mm. unless the Lord helps you, right? The, the one who builds a house, unless God helps him, he, right. he is laboring in vain. in vain. That is the word of the Lord. Yet because of our time, we do need to close now. But I'm, I'm promising you we are returning still on the same topic. And I do know that God will continue to deliver you and deliver me and help us out of this trouble of fire that is in mm. our mouth. <laughs> hey, God help us. Till another time, I wish you all the best and I commit you into the hands of the Lord who is able to keep you from failing or falling. Pastor Samuel, thank you so much. Thank you, sir, thank for having you. me. And we look forward to another Amen. opportunity. Amen. To God be the praise. Hallelujah.